Good morning, everyone. Welcome the, to this IPA for SME exclusive uh, webinar for EPO representatives. Uh, my name is uh, John Lanfranco, and I am project manager at uh, Gopacom, a communications agency in Brussels that is a partner in the IPA for SME consortium. Uh, today's uh, webinar will be presented by Cristina de la Maza and Francisco Buhan from CARSA, who is the IPA for SME um, consortium leader. Throughout the webinar, you can write questions uh, in the GoToWebinar question box, and this will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Specific questions uh, might be followed individually, uh, followed up individually by email by the IPA for SME Coordination Center. So enjoy the webinar, and uh, Cristina and Francisco, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Joan, for the presentation. Thank you very much for the for the attendance. Uh, yeah, we are uh, we were trying to to have a special webinar directed to uh, the EPO professionals uh, uh, for the presentation of the general terms of the action IPA for SME uh, action that we are we've been running for 18 months now. Uh, because we wanted to to get specific questions from coming from uh, from your your uh, expertise and coming from your experience and your role to support our activities. So uh, as you can see, the IP for SME um, action is uh, funded by the European Commission and in this case is directly managed uh, by the European Commission, uh, specifically by the team that is in charge of the IP policies for Europe. And in this case, we are working for the IP assistance for SMEs. Uh, the idea is to uh, strengthen the capacities of the SMEs in the IP valorization. So uh, um, in, until now, the IP for SME has been supporting uh, a type of uh, SMEs, a type of innovative SMEs uh, for the protection of the IP uh, uh, assets and uh, these innovative SMEs, uh, until now, the beneficiaries has been what is called the holders of the seal of excellence, meaning the, the companies that have been supported by the European Commission in the program called uh, H2020 SME instrument. Um, um, we can go into, into deep uh, as much as you need for the explanation of, of what is this type of profile of companies. Uh, I don't want to take the, the time now, but we are open uh, after for questions as regard to uh, what type of uh, beneficiaries the action is supporting until now. Um, the, the companies will be uh, awarded uh, uh, up to 15,000 euros uh, in different services. So the, the European Commission, and, and we also agree on, on the uh, on believing that the protection of intellectual property is crucial for promoting innovation and boosting the competitiveness in European SMEs. Um, and now we are offering the three types of services. Um, there is a first service that I'm going to, uh, to present, even if it's not directed to your profile, but because uh, as soon as you access to our website, you're going to have questions on that service. It's a complementary service that has been provided by a specific EU IPO trained experts, as you can see in the note at the end. And until now, because this, this is a pilot uh, action, only for 11 countries that are named in our website. The, the point is that this service uh, are somehow uh, close to, to this uh, uh, trained experts. That's why I just want you to know, but uh, there is no uh, space of, uh, of uh, uh, somehow widening the, the, the number of professionals uh, to provide this service for the moment. We will be informing you uh, until, until the end of our activities. That is still one, uh, 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 at least one year and a half more, meaning the end of 2021. So uh, those experts are providing an IP prediagnostic, a first analysis on the uh, IP assets uh, coming from the from the SME, um, how to protect those assets in front of the com uh, competitors, and uh, a proposition of strategy um, 
for the company in the in the medium and long term. Um, in general, in general, those services are provided by the nation, uh, national IP offices. Uh, open for your questions after, but I would like to uh, today. I would like to focus on the services that that are directly uh, uh, that should be directly supported by you. That is, we have two type of services. There is a, a service for the uh, IPO uh, fee reimbursement, and there is a service for uh, the um, reimbursement of the fees uh, that uh, are uh, charged by you uh, to the companies when you are providing the corresponding service of, uh, of uh, um, patent search, of, uh, of uh, uh, patent uh, procedures, uh, to the company in front of the EPO. So the action is um, is, um, is uh, supporting up to the 75 percent of the um, of the corresponding EPO fee. After we are going to see uh, which fees are um, supported by our action, up to a limit of uh, 2,000 uh, 2,500 euros per patent application. Uh, but the point is that the company can apply several times and up to five applications, up to five different patents. Uh, because in, in the case of some innovative uh, companies, they are patenting several um, assets. Additionally, because this patenting process uh, requires, in general, requires your support, we are also uh, reimbursing the, the um, let's say the, the money the, the invoice uh, that you are uh, providing to the company to support these patenting services and uh, this is uh, supported up to 20, uh, 50 percent and the maximum uh, per patent application will be two thousand uh, euros uh, but and specifically it will be for IP attorneys that uh, has um, uh, the classification or to be entitled to act before the EPO. Uh, that is for your for your profile, and uh, there is no limit in the number of applications. Uh, but the the point is that each application has to be related to a unique patent uh, application process. Uh, well, uh, the IP for SME action uh, is uh, open in a continuous way. But for uh, for the for organizing the beneficiaries, we apply uh, what we call cutoffs, closures, ranking of uh, the applications that we have received until a moment, and we have just uh, opened uh, a new process in June 26th, uh, meaning uh, last last week, and uh, this process will be open until the 30th of September, but. Uh, uh, the day after the 30th of September, we will open the, the next uh, cutoff. So we are open for uh, for applicants in a continuous way. In, su in such a case, until now, we have been supporting more than 700 uh, SMEs, um, and they they have uh, we we are uh, um, surveying the satisfaction of the services, and we have. Uh, receive an enthusiastic opinion on, on what we are funding. Um, because uh, uh, of the profile of the companies, because of the number of, uh, of people involved, meaning the stakeholders, the, the EPO uh, representatives, you, the, uh, the experts for the, for the provision of the IP pre-diagnostic, the application process, we, we simplified it as much as possible and it will be done uh, in a three steps uh, uh, procedure through uh, our uh, management system, uh, simplifying the number of documents that the company uh, has to present both for the application and for the reimbursement of the of the invoices. Uh, again, until now, the SMEs that could benefit from the from the action are the ones that holds a seal of excellence. Uh, they have been funded by the SME instrument. Uh, it, of course, they have to be considered SMEs under, under the rules of, the, of uh, the European Commission in the number of employees and in, in the number of turnover. 
the, the uh, fewer than 250 um, employees and an annual turnover not exceeding the 50 million euros and the, the all the EU countries and associated countries under the COSME um, program will be uh, eligible for using our services. We have the website with a complete and uh, summarized information. We have uh, our activities in the in the different social networks, in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and we also present the the help desk uh, mail box that we are daily answering to questions coming both from the applicants and also from your side. Um, you can uh, either use uh, use the the help desk as itself when when it's a general question, general inquiry. Or you can use what we call the calls at when, when it, there is a, a question coming from a beneficiary, someone that is already awarded, a company that is already awarded. Uh, open for your for your questions before the applications uh, to support your customers, your SME customers, uh, to support your your uh, your detailed questions and and to answer quickly uh, so that you can help the the company to to run the process. Um, apart from the general presentation of the concepts, um, we would like to present today uh, a summary of the frequently asked uh, questions that we had until now, but we would like to complete those questions with, with the ones that you are uh, posing to us during this webinar today. So uh, I would like my colleague Francisco to present the questions and to start the, the discussion on details. Hello, good morning everyone. Thanks for, for attending this webinar. So summarizing our target group in, within this program are, um, are S European SMEs that have been awarded with a seal of excellence because they participated in a, in a research and innovation uh, supporting program launched by the European Commission uh, that particip participated, presented a good proposal but was not finally selected for funding but in but it still was a good proposal and that's why the the commission issued a, a seal of excellence so so um so this is our main target and of course that's why we we, we made this uh, webinar for you some of might be of your clients cost, current uh, customers might be the case that they are um innovative companies that are um, have holding a seal of excellence uh, and and that, that's why we are we are gathering you today here. So, uh, but going to to the some of the most uh, frequently asked questions is is what type of uh, because of course uh, companies might choose to to go uh, following your advice to to one uh, or another protection mechanism of of their technology or knowledge assets, uh, and in particularly uh, we are a very um, it is very important to know that we are only supporting in our program uh, so SMEs will have to apply in our program if they are um, somehow uh, eventually going to um, register an European patent and only European patents okay so um, so the question is uh, if, if all our patents are eligible well no it's only European patents no no patent applications or patent actions that that companies might uh, have uh, done uh, to um, to protect their their technologies or to cover their technologies in, in countries like U.S., China, Canada, Canada etc., will be covered. Only only those that, that are made by um, uh, by the EPO or through the EPO as as a, a assigned uh, office will be uh, eligible for for reimbursement. And what type of and 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 and, in, and going deeper into that, not all. The fees that are um, charged by the EPO are covered. Uh, only those that you can see in the screen right now, which are uh, selected, uh, very selected um, code of, of fee fee codes that are covered. Which main ob uh, objective, uh, as, as, as you can see, is well, most of the main objectives to to be um, to to register new European patents. Uh, is there another question? Is there any time limitation for justifying for uh, EPO and IP attorney fees 
uh, after after the the, the the SME has been selected for support under our program. Um, yes, basically we we wanted uh, we as as Christina was saying before, this is an, a pilot action, and, and and we really didn't know exactly what how to um, approach this, and and we thought that maybe four months would be a a reasonable timing for um, uh, at least start the process and start um, presenting the the required documentation to us so we can uh, we can reimburse the the costs uh, and that is basically um, that is basically the time frame that we have set up for at least initiate the the the, uh, the justification process in our program once a company has been selected okay there are some other uh, exceptions uh, or, or or additional timing, but I think those, those are details that you might not be interested in at right now. But this is basically the main message: is that the four months uh, to initiate and to to uh, present to us the, the required documentation. Because as, as as you can as you can may, may remember, we have three basic services. The first one, we, what we call service one, is IP pre diagnostic. Okay. Uh, that is that is provided by a certain um, a specific um, uh, type of experts uh, located only in in 11 countries all over Europe or only it's just a nice number but it's still not all the countries uh, and but the, the most uh, and the, but the most important or most relevant uh, services to you right now would be uh, service two and service three service two being reimbursement of EPO fees uh, and service three reimbursement of your costs the cost that you um, issue to uh, to to your customers via invoices um so um so that would be it and and the next question would be uh, um, am i uh, i'm already working with an ip attorney uh, are, are his or her costs reimbursable in principle yes but they but uh, but but sometimes companies do not work directly with with attorneys or uh, lawyers that are entitled to work in front of the EPO or the EPO and 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 that would be the answer so only only um only uh, ip attorneys uh, entitled to act uh, uh, before the epo are the ones eligible for us so the ones eligible for the, the for the smes that are participating in our program that's why it's important to to to, to highlight this Well, once once a company has submitted an application to to our program, uh, what process does it have to follow uh, if selected for support? Well, they they can immediately um, um, ask for reimbursement of services two and three. Remember, a APO and, and uh, IP attorney fees, uh, and, and this will be done on a on a one to one uh, basis. Um, right after the the selection has been uh, has been done. So. Uh, and this is also an important uh, connection with with another with question six that you can see down there is is um what what is exactly the 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 time or or the timeline that have to be considered is uh, this since this program has been has been conceived as a uh, incentivation for a new european patents uh, from uh, register applied by european smes um, we will only uh, support uh, by via reimbursement those applications on works done by you as as IP lawyers to to SMEs um, done after that we have communicated that they, these SMEs have been selected. Okay, so it's, it's this is a precise, a very clear um, point in time after which every cost that they have in this uh, field will be reimbursed. And every cost they, that they might have had in the past is not reimbursable. Okay, so that's it's a very clear thing. But uh, that, that that are the rules. And uh, well, and the question number five is exclusively related to to where it's a technical thing about the seal of excellence and their participation in in innovation programs of the European Commission, which might I mean at this stage not very interesting for you. Is whether where they can find or where, whether they have been awarded with a seal of excellence, but it's it's a, it's a mandatory requirement requirement from from us. As, and if they have a seal of excellence, uh, they, they are eligible. If they don't, they are not eligible. So, uh, and number question number seven, it's more or less the same: is where they can find this seal of excellence and some things. But I think the the most important thing is that 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 um, there is a potential. Um, well, let's say market or, or, or potential beneficiaries audience there 
out there that might be your your clients who who, who have a um, a funding uh, or, or support uh, program here in the European Commission in case they have been awarded with a seal of excellence. Uh, going back to service two, I, I would like to highlight also that, uh, and you you know that better than 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 us, that many times uh, is the is 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 the is not the company itself that that is dealing or paying the EPO uh, fees uh, by themselves, but they normally do by um, with with your help with the with the help of their IP attorney, and uh, and this is a this is a um, this is a scheme or a way of operation that that is also okay for us. Okay, so in case you are helping out your clients in in also uh, the, this process of registering and, and and making the application for the EPO, uh, and that you are paying the the fees uh, in advance on their behalf, this this can also be a way of justifying and, and for us it's okay. So for the moment that would be. It. And uh, we are open to any any questions that you well, might just, have. Just to, to add uh, some additional points, uh, uh, at this po at this uh, stage we have uh, active services for what we call the Cata Four and the Cata Five, or, and and you can find in our website the list of names of the companies per country that has been uh, awarded. For the for the Cata four and five, one list for the Cata four, one list for the Cata five that we published this Monday last Monday. You have there you you have like two hundred companies and you can go straight to your to your country and you can see the names of the of the companies that have uh, the, that are waiting for to be served for the EPO uh, registration. Um, um, meaning that uh, from these like 400 companies, I could say that most of them have uh, selected the two type of, uh, of services. So uh, those companies are active. That those companies are uh, are waiting to are uh, have been awarded. Those companies are are waiting to use uh, our services in the next four months or more, depending on the on the on how active they are. But uh, yeah, for 400 companies alive, uh, awarded beneficiaries, and somehow with the with the with the uh, reimbursement apart from our side until they present us the corresponding invoices. And this is in our website. If it's, it's not easy for you to find it, we can we can inform you uh, when Gopa uh, is sending the the contents of this webinar to you. Uh, we can we can attach also. The links to the to the list of beneficiaries. It's also I would like also to um, highlight or add that that well actually we are using here uh, a term that is now well, it's 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 known by everybody but it has changed as you know also the European Commission's programs are more or less constantly changing and uh, maybe not on on, on the on the background philosophy or, or objectives but also on the, but but one of the names. And what we call or what we refer to uh, SME SME instrument as a program is no longer that it doesn't have no, that name no, any longer, and it, it is EIC accelerator. It's it's is the program that are at this moment is providing with seal of excellences uh, to those projects presented that are um, of high quality, but they they are not selected for funded. Because funds are limited, and and but still there are good projects, and this this type of projects are uh, awarded, as we said, uh, with a seal of excellence, and under this uh, program, which name is now a uh, EIC accelerator. And one more thing is that we, as Christina was saying, we 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 are going to be um, selecting SMEs until approximately May next year. So we we in our plan there are nine cutoff dates for selecting or or having a look at which, which, how many applications from SMEs do we have. Uh, and uh, the next one is 30th of September, 2020, as this is our sixth. The next one would be most probably, I think it's December, will be the seventh and so on. And we will be at least, uh, our program would, is planning to have nine, and as I said, until more or less May next year. So, so it might be the case that some of your clients 
RSMEs and some of clients might have not heard of or may, might have not even um, but or might have not even participated in this EIC accelerator program of the European Commission but if they're thinking of doing it if they might have a look at it and see if it's interesting apart from of course a part of this, this action of whether they're going to have a seal of excellence or not uh, it, there is still time for 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 them and for you to advise them on on the existence of this program and the existence of IP for SME as a collateral supporting program uh, if if they they award if they are awarded with a seal of excellence um, and so there's there's time to for them to 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 participate in this type of programs and and, and benefit from 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 some funding on there so that's yeah well in that sense uh, because uh, all the information has to be public as i was explaining that for example um awarded companies uh with the corresponding uh assigning um, uh, service or fees for service uh, for the services to the epo and the ep attorney you can find them uh in our list uh, per country also uh, potential beneficiaries there is a public database by the european commission that is called SME, SME instrument as the program HUB, H-U-B. You can find it in Google and there is a public database of the companies that are under, under the profile of beneficiaries, potential beneficiaries of our action in case. You can also, you can filter by country and you can also find in a map, it's quite an easy tool, you can find in a map where, where are those companies? It's a, it's a geopositional hub. You can see how far from your office they are uh, physically. Uh, this uh, SME instrument hub, public database of the companies that are under the profile of, of beneficiaries from our from our action. All the information is public. We use also the EPO, the EPO um, uh, representatives uh, database. Uh, is the way we uh, we access to your to your names. Because uh, uh, as you see and you, as you have to consider, everything, uh, all the names are public in that sense. So uh, yeah, as uh, Francisco was uh, was going for the questions, uh, Joan, if you want to support us uh, for the chat a... and questions, yes, we have a couple of questions already. Um, the first one uh, from Catherine says, "Does the fee reimbursement?" work for PCT applications for which EPO is the International Search Administration? Yes, we, we, we've been having that uh, some of those cases and uh, uh, and uh, the conclusion, we, we actually didn't know at the beginning, as we said, it was a pilot, a pilot, is a pilot action, but uh, the, the conclusion after uh, going through legislation and, and, uh, and everything, the conclusion is that that, that the, the answer is yes, yes. As long as the as, as EPO is the assigned office for that PCT, and as long as uh, the PCT includes uh, uh, some European countries, at least two, um, the, the, those costs will be will be eligible. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, but but again, that, that would be for service three, okay? Because in service two, we only reimburse, even though you work with them, uh, we we reimburse those very specific. EPO fee codes. So uh, registration. Let's go. Let's go. Sorry. Let's go with, for them fax, because fax. Uh, in fact, yeah. yes. Sorry, because this is very. This is very important. Uh, this here yeah, code one, two, five, six. Fee for grant and printing. Th th these are only uh, if you pay that fees in advance for them. It's okay. But but if you go for a PCT and you work with the uh, with the company for PCT and you do your work, blah blah blah. Uh, uh, th th those costs are eligible, but uh, under service three. Okay, so the, the, the company has to up, have to be have applied to service three, and, and that that will be okay. Well, well, well when 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 San Francisco is calling service three, we are referring to IP attorney fee reimbursement. Yeah. Yes. Actually, the IP attorney fee reimbursement could be uh, for your service, even if the conclusion is not a, a patent. Uh, I mean, a, regist a, a patent registration, mm. yeah? You go with the company, you give your service, and uh, in some cases, you get to the conclusion that uh, the, what the, the technology that the, the company is, uh, uh, is uh, somehow uh, thinking about patenting, 
uh, your advice is not not to register that patent. <coughs> so the conclusion would be no registration for the IP attorney. And in that case, even in that case, uh, you, because you have worked with them, because they have uh, analyzed that, and you 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 charge your costs, of course, uh, but th this cost would be also eligible uh, because they have been done in in the framework of a eventual European patent application. Okay, and even if the conclusion is that. Uh, continuation of this uh, of, of this uh, patent application, uh, the, the, those costs will be eligible. This is also important to, for you to know and also for the companies to know. Okay, next question. Um, is the reimbursement of uh, both for EPO fee but also for IP attorney in future disbursements only? Or can it be already paid? Uh, this or, or can the, the reimbursements be already uh, paid? Uh, reimbursed so i guess i guess you mean that if if, if this reimbursement are uh, is, is um, if, if past cost or incurred or past cost uh, are subject of reimbursement the answer is no uh, only costs that have been incurred after the company has been selected in a program would be would be subject of reimbursement okay so then that that is as i said it, it's a very specific point in time every 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 cutoff date we communicate uh, every cutoff date we communicate the, the list of selects uh, selecting uh, selected smes on a specific date in this case for instance the last time was uh, was um, 7th of july so a couple of days ago and so 7th of july 2020 is the reference date for all the SMEs selected under our fifth um, cut of date, uh, and the, the date, the reference date for which and uh, so for which cost incurred after this date, uh, that date would be reimbursed. Not no not on, not only a cost incurred before that date would be subject of the reimbursement. That is a very very clear rule. Yeah, but in, in general in general terms from from public funds, uh, incentivization of, of, of activities is uh, is one of the of the keys. And is this this is the case? I mean, yeah, there is no incentivization if if there is a past uh, activity. So only uh, services provided after the uh, award award uh, the date yeah the, the, the only the only the only thing that might um, make you think that and that i also think uh, that is not 100 percent incentivation uh, i mean looking fu future is if you look at at uh, code 033 of the epo fees that are reimbursement which is renewal fee for the third year so that actually yeah it refers to a renewal fee of the third year of European patent that a company might have, and we that is also subject of reimbursement. But as as you can see, it's for for service two, which is a EPO um, or in, uh, fees. Okay, but in any case, your fees uh, and uh, and and EPO fees we will have to look at into to the future. So we have to be future costs. Um, and, and 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 costs incurred after uh, has been selected. No, never, never look into the past. Okay. Okay. So the next question from Jean is: uh, Still time for a company to try to receive the seal of excellence? If yes, how long does it take? Yeah. Well. Yeah. As I as I was saying, there's there's there is time to that. The commission. Um, opens also also in a in a similar basis at this cut off dates that we are using in in our program uh, in the in this EIC accelerator program they also they also um, they also articulate this program in, in via a cut off dates which have also like two every two three months a cut off date the next one it goes for seventh of October as much as as far as I remember. 7th of October will be the next cut of date. So, and, and probably they will have another by the beginning of next year. And normally they take like a couple of months to uh, to um, issue the results. So uh, I guess the, uh, my, my, my calculation is that um, that there's still time for a couple of, co of, of uh, cut of dates, a couple of co um, calls, let's say, let's call them like that, for your client companies to apply to this uh, pro European co program and to receive eventually a seal of excellence and therefore be become a eventual uh, a potential 
uh, IP for SME beneficiaries. So yes, I, I would say there's there's no much time, but there's still time, like uh, six months more or less. No, it, it maybe maybe a little bit more because as I said, our ninth cut of date is scheduled for May next year, so almost one year from now, and and within this time frame, uh, there I think. It, it, it fit there fits like three cutoff dates for for the European program, so there's still like three 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 chances of of of, of receiving a seal of excellence. So yeah, yeah, there's plenty of time, and uh, so yeah, of course this is our, our our objective also to encourage that you might encourage your clients to to have a look at this program. Of course, to see whether or not it is a, is something relevant and that that can match their strategy. Um, uh, and therefore, um, uh, have a look at it and, 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 and take your chances on that. Yeah. Okay, next question from Yuka. Um, can you please repeat whether, if are the companies uh, found on the map from the EIC Accelerator Hub eligible for this funding? And then is uh, this funding the minimis uh, funding? Did you understand the first? Like the first? minimum funding, yeah. No, but I didn't understand the first question. The first question, the are first the part. companies found on the map from the EIC Accelerator Hub eligible for this funding? Yes. This hub, the, 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 this uh, database, all are uh, potentially uh, beneficiaries uh, to be, to apply to our action. Yes. The, the, only, the only restriction here is is if they have been awarded with uh, phase two. Let's explain this. Uh, the SME instrument, that is the former name of this program, had two pillars or two type of projects, phase one projects and phase two projects. A company could apply for either of those. Um, the one, the SMEs that have been applied, that applied to phase two and won the project and subsequently being funded under this phase two are not eligible okay this this might be some cases of the of this uh, database of companies you have to look at it so if they have been awarded with a project not a seal of excellence as i said seal of excellence is only given to those who were good but was not awarded with a fund and um, uh, so those those phase two uh, phase two awarded smes are not eligible and also, uh, this this SME instrument now is called EIC Accelerator, which under brackets is like a phase two. So if, if a company has been awarded with funds, approved a project and, 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 and received funds from this EIC Accelerator, is also not eligible. So in that database are companies that participated in the program. Some of them were, were successful. If they are successful in phase two or EIC accelerator uh, now um, are not eligible, but those who are there and were not successful in, in receiving funds are are totally eligible. Okay, so it's it's only the, the, the only requirement for us is that they, they, they have to be not being elected for selected board for phase two. But for the rest of the database is participants of the program are totally eligible and of course they, they have to have a seal. Thanks. Uh, next question. And then the, the, there was yeah. a second part about the the, the minimis. Um, th this has to be checked in, uh, on a national basis, as far as I remember. And um, whether uh, whether this is uh, has um, this is considered to be a minimis uh, a minimis type of, of, of support, financial support, uh, if 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 their national uh, legislation. Um, considers that this this uh, european sub, uh, program uh, uh, type of support is 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 under uh, the, the minimis rule that it, it will have to be uh, but if it doesn't if it doesn't say uh, say like this uh, it will have to be not considered under a minimis rule it's it's a it's on a national basis thanks the next question from luis uh, how can the program support the third renewal if that is in two years in the future? Mm. 
well, it, it, it can't. <laughs> the answer is it it, it, it it can't support that because uh, because if it's in, if it's in in two years, um, uh, you you would be out of the. I mean, it would be out of the of the of our action, of the scope of our action. No, it, it, I mean it's we support costs that are that are. This is well. That made, it's a good question. We support costs that are, let's say. Time framed within the day that we inform you that you've been selected or the company has been selected until the end of the year 2021 or the end of, of, of our program. Our program finishes well, actually the very beginning of 22, but uh, for administrative reasons, we need to we need to we need to close the the the, the documentation uh, receivement and everything and the payments and, and reimbursement by the end of 21. So everything that is uh, located between now, let's say now and the end of 2021, and uh, in form of invoices, uh, are eligible costs. Okay. Well, the end mean, means the 31st, 31st of, of December, December of 2021. 2021. Yes. Okay. So might be the case. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you can pay a, a three-year renewal. If it's still some months in advance, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can do that. But if 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 that's the case, if you if, let's imagine that by November 2021 you 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 are authorized to pay a renewal that that has to be that actually the timing is like in May 2022. If you can do that and the company can provide a proof that this has been issued an invoice and you and they have paid. It would be okay for us. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. So that's the only way I can think of, 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 of doing something in like that much in advance. Everything that is contained within this time framework, now and 2021, 31st December 2021, is eligible for us. As as is as, as long uh, the eligibility. I mean, what we need to to reimburse is the invoice and the corresponding proof of payment. And as long as we have that within this time frame. It's okay for us. Thanks. Next question: Are costs related to post-grant work, such as opposition, translations for validation in some EP countries, etc., eligible under Service Three? Mm. Well, I, I, I would I would be inclined to say no because uh, th those works that we are supporting to the SMEs of your work has to be in the frame of a new European patent application. That well, new or, or European patent application has not which has not been granted yet. So, if if you the, the important thing here is maybe we have not forgotten to say is that. Um, when a company applies to our program, one of the, as, as we said, we, they can make several applications to a program. Every time they apply, they apply uh, in relation to one particular specific asset. And this, this, yeah, patent, yeah. So, so um, that this this particular patent, uh, sorry, um, uh, asset to be protected or in process of being protected. Uh, has to be in, in in the framework of an European patent uh, that has not been granted yet. But so so if you are working in in renewals or 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 things that have been already awarded to the company, that this is out of the scope. Uh, so it has to be something that the company has as an asset, and that you are working with them to uh, to to make it. Uh, into an European patent. That might might be more or less the the, the answer. No. Yeah. Thanks. The next question: What will happen after 2021? Is there a, a next program from the EU? That's a good question. <laughs> well, uh, because we are in in continuous contact with the IP national offices. Uh, some of the countries are already running um, similar services or additional services uh, uh, complementing ours. Uh, 
some countries are thinking about starting um, the reimbursement of services is similar to ours. Um, the, the point is that uh, uh, this action as it is will be, will be ending in 2021. And from now, <laughs> we cannot... Uh, yeah, the, the, the thing is that, yeah, we, 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 we were selected. I mean, the, the European Commission called as in, in a program. They called for uh, applications. We applied as to be the, the coordination center and the, the, the guys who would be running this program for in, on behalf of the European Commission. We won the, 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 the action, and, and that's what we can say. I mean, wh whether the Commission is thinking of extending this action because as, as, as they, they say it's also and it's, it's a pilot action as we said this is a pilot action whether it depends on the on the i guess it depends on on the availability of funds and, and depends on also on the success of this action well, uh, yeah, we're absolutely. working very much hard uh, very hard on, on making this a success yeah. but you never know uh, you never know whether policy might change yeah. when and but, what but to be honest and that's why also we we thought it was really important to have a, a specific webinar with you to be honest services to services for the EPO fees and services for the IP attorney fees are underused. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's successful because they are using, the, the SMEs are using the services. Uh, they, they are being reimbursed uh, in, a, in a good manner with us and in a, in, on time. And, and we are interacting with them, supporting for the, for the presentation of documents and so on but there are plenty of companies that are not using the service they have been awarded so uh yeah and, and, the, and it will be i mean the action will be closed uh, even if those services are underused yeah. yeah what we do is that when we select a company uh, a specific budget is assigned to them even i mean if we we we, we we hope that they spend that budget uh, and they spend this uh, support. But as Christina was saying, not, not say many times, but some of the or, or were a good number of SMEs, uh, maybe because they don't understand the rules, maybe the, 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 because the rules are so strict. I don't know. Is the rules that we've been we've been given um, that that many times they they just can't prove or they can't uh, receive our reimbursement, our support um, for your services, in this case, service B, because they simply, they, I don't know what, what's going on. No, the point is that for, for some of the companies uh, are, are in sectors uh, for which uh, patenting and, uh, and uh, uh, taking care of IP uh, assets, capacities, knowledge, and so on, uh, is part of their, their strategy. Uh, but for, for some of the companies, this is new. They know that they they have a, they, they can be beneficiaries, but they are beneficiaries. But uh, they they don't they don't really understand uh, the procedure, the benefit, the the, the 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 support that your profile of uh, of uh, professionals are giving to them. Um, so uh, it's, it's a lack of knowledge uh, sometimes from the from the companies uh, because they are considered that. Plenty of them are like startups, or uh, they are focused on on, on uh, presenting the, the, their technology to the markets, and, uh, and and they don't have experience on, on, on IP and the importance uh, to internationalize technologies and, and, and products. So uh, sometimes it's, a, it's it's also a lack of uh, of knowledge of uh, of the importance of IP plus the the APO patent procedures, patenting procedures that you know and you are... Well, yes, and SMEs yeah. are, are, well, are a very specific type of companies, which when they, and well, we all do that, of course, but uh, when, when, when they hear there's a, there's a financial support, they just go to it and they just jump into it and, and then they realize it's not that easy or it, it realizes that it, it entails in the, and entails some understanding of, 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 of what just Christina was saying, that that uh, entails an understanding of, 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 of uh, what a patent might um, imply and so on and the process and, and sometimes it, it is not what they thought and and, it, and, and, and and it is not what they thought so they don't use it. Yeah, that's why they come to us with, a, with an attorney that is not registered or, yeah. or certified and they, they come with, a, with their friends and so on and, and this is not 
So that means that they are not understanding um, yeah, yeah. the process, the reason why uh, public funds are used for, uh, for this uh, somehow formal uh, um, process. Yeah. yeah so. No questions. Okay, so no more questions. <laughs> Great. I think we are just on on time, right? Okay. So uh, in any case, we will uh, uh, share through Gopa. If you want to to summarize, John, we will share all the contents uh, of the audio today. Uh, we Indeed, are open we will to send the recording session. of the webinar yes. and any information, detailed information for for all the EPO representatives to participate in the program. Uh, because this was a really quick and short presentation of ideas, still, again, to, to offer you our uh, email addresses for the help desk to send us direct questions uh, from you after somehow uh, preparing how to offer those services or how to support your customers to to those services oh. okay I, i'm just typing no okay mm -hmm. no just, just uh, it's, use, it's, it's the, yes. the yeah yes. the, the, the other one yeah yes, just, just use the, the these, uh, desks. Uh, yeah here yeah you can you can you can direct your questions to either of these two email addresses and we will reply accordingly to to your question and, and but uh, yeah as you got the main idea is that that you um that you um involve your clients in this as much as you can of course and see if, if it might be interested for them okay so thank, thank you very much thank you very much for the attendance and uh i hope uh, we hope you you can you can work with us to support your customers for the future thank you Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Joan. Bye.